Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a Ryzen 9 5900HX mini PC that really packs a punch. This is known as the Morphine S500 Plus, and like I mentioned, this is using the Ryzen 9 5900HX APU. We've got 8 cores, 16 threads, with a boost clock up to 4.4 GHz, and built-in Radeon 8 graphics at 2100 MHz. So I suspect that this little mini PC is definitely going to put down some really good power, and I've been wanting to get my hands on this for a little while due to the form factor and the APU it's using. And first impressions on the design, it actually looks pretty good, it's obviously a mini PC, and it's actually constructed of aluminum. So along with the S500 Plus Mini PC, inside of the box we're also going to receive a mounting system here. This is a little bracket that can be attached to the bottom of the unit. We've got all the mounting hardware we need. Cabling for a 2.5 inch SSD or mechanical drive. 6 foot HDMI cable. And a pretty beefy power supply when it comes to these mini PCs. Usually you'll see a 65 watt, maybe a 90 watt if you're lucky. But Morphine has included a 120 watt power supply with this unit. Up front, we have a USB Type-C port, and this will support display out. Two USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports. We've also got our power LED indicator and our power button. Taking a look at both sides, we've got some ventilation here, and I suspect we will need it with this APU because it can draw a lot of wattage. And moving around back, we have our power jack. Four USB 2.0 ports. I would have loved to see a couple more USB 3.0 or even 3.2 ports back here. But we do have a full-size HDMI port and a full-size display port, so we can get a total of three displays out on this using HDMI, display, and USB Type-C up front. They've also included dual Ethernet ports on this PC. One is a 1 gig port, the other is a 2.5 gig port. Before we move over to the specs, I did want to give you a look at the internals here and just see what can be upgraded on this unit. As you can see, we do have a copper heatsink here with a blower style fan. This is actually a pretty beefy heatsink when it comes to these mini PCs. Hopefully it keeps it nice and chilly. Next thing I noticed on the bottom here was an extra M.2 slot, and this will support another NVMe drive, or we can add an external GPU down the road to this unit. We also have access to pulling the top cover off with two screws on the rear, and from here you can see that we can access that RAM very easily. It's running in dual channel, we have 32 gigabytes here, and another NVMe M.2 SSD. So we can add a total of two NVMe SSDs and a 2.5 inch drive to this tiny PC. Taking a look at the specs of the S500 Plus for the APU, we've got the Ryzen 9 5900HX, 8 cores, 16 threads, base clock at 3.3 GHz with a boost up to 4.6. Now this is sold in a couple different variants, you can go bare bones with it with no storage or RAM, or you can get it up to 64GB and a 1TB NVMe SSD. The RAM is running at 3200MHz and running in dual channel. Along with the M.2 NVMe slot, you can add a 2.5 inch SSD. It also has Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, and it runs Windows out of the box, but you could go ahead and install Linux if you want to. In this video, we're going to run some benchmarks, test out some PC games, and we'll move over to a little bit of emulation by the end of this. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump right into Windows 11. Alright, so here we are. As you can see, we've got that Ryzen 9 5900HX and the built-in Radeon Vega 8 graphics up to 2100 MHz on the 5900HX. This thing is super quick, and I kind of expected it to be. 8 cores, 16 threads, and when it comes to these Ryzen mini PCs, the first thing I always like to check is the TDP on this CPU. I haven't changed anything from the BIOS, and this is actually running at about 45 to 50 watts, which is perfect for this little APU. And through the testing I've done so far, I haven't seen any kind of thermal throttling. I'm sure running Cinebench on this for 10 minutes straight would thermal throttle this little PC. But normal use and gaming, we're going to keep those clocks on the CPU and GPU. Let me go ahead and run a little bit of a stress test on this GPU. Check out those sensors. We're up to 2100 megahertz, exactly what we should be running at. Got my power over here just so we can check this out. 54 watts, and you'll see it drop back down to around 45, but this is great because with this kind of TDP or this kind of wattage on this APU, we can keep nice clocks on the CPU side of things, and we can keep that GPU clock at 2100 megahertz indefinitely while we're playing games. These 5900HX APUs are actually really amazing. Time to take a look at some benchmarks, and first on the list we have Geekbench 5. Coming in with a really strong single core of 1537, and multi isn't looking half bad either at 8,118. 
Taking a look at some GPU benchmarks with 3 d Mark Night Ray. Total score here, 17,662. Fire Strike came in with a 4,057. And finally, Time Spy with 1,630. Not bad at all for a mobile chip, but when it comes down to it, this is a pretty powerful little APU. But now, it's time to move over to some gaming. And first up, I definitely wanted to test Elden Ring. Here it is at 720p low. We're getting an average of 44 FPS, really not that bad for a Ryzen APU, but I wanted to see if we could take the resolution up just a little bit more. So I went up to 900p, we're still at low settings, but we could actually run this at 30 FPS, 900p, low on this mini PC, and I'm not exactly sure how well it's coming across in a YouTube video that's been compressed, but uh, going from 720p to 900p with a game like this really does make a difference. Next up, we've got Skyrim. This is the original version. We're at high settings, 1080p, looking really good here. I didn't unlock the FPS or anything like that, but we're running at a constant 60. I haven't seen it dip one time while playing this game at high settings. Taking a look at GTA 5, and in the past month, we've actually got a real nice performance boost when it comes to APUs. I mean, basically across the board. From the 3000 series up to the 5000 series, which we have in this PC, we're at 1080p normal settings, and I got an average of 81 FPS out of this game. Definitely some of the best performance that I've personally seen out of a Ryzen 5000 series APU so far. Street Fighter V is another one I always like to test. We're at 1080p, high settings, running at 60. Unfortunately, I can't run Afterburner up in the top left-hand corner, but we're only pulling around 35 watts from this APU while running this at 1080p high. The emulation. First up, we have PS2 using PCSX2, DirectX 11 back end. We're at 1080p with Gran Turismo 4, and I did try 1440 with this, but I was getting some stutters here and there. If I turned on a few of the hacks in the emulator, I'm sure I could run this at 1440, but I'd rather run it without any hacks at all, and 1080p is smooth as butter. And of course, we had to test some PS3 with one of those games that does require a pretty beefy CPU to run at full speed. Looking really good, but you can see that that CPU is being pretty stressed out. We're at 90 degrees Celsius, and it did hit 91 with this emulator. We didn't hit thermal throttle, but it's getting really close. And these are the highest temps I saw while doing any kind of emulation or gaming. But when it comes down to it, it can definitely do these PS3 games. For being such a small form factor PC, we are pushing a lot of wattage into this 5900HX. And I was worried about the temps, but they're really not that bad. This is set up to thermal throttle at 95 degrees Celsius. And for emulation and gaming, we didn't hit it. Like I mentioned at the beginning, if we stress that CPU out for more than 10 minutes with all 8 cores and 16 threads, I'm sure we could. But on average, at idle, we're around 39 degrees Celsius. Average gaming, 75. And the max I saw while doing any kind of gaming or emulation was 91 degrees Celsius. It definitely sounds hot for a bigger desktop PC, but we're working with a very small form factor PC here, and we're pushing a lot of wattage into this APU. And when it comes to fan noise, it's definitely audible, especially when you hit around 71 degrees Celsius. So while gaming, you will hear this thing spin up. It's got a blower style fan in it. It's not as loud as a gaming laptop with a dedicated GPU, but you can hear this. It's not a totally silent PC. Whenever I'm doing these mini PC tests, I always have it plugged into a kilowatt meter at the wall so we can see total system power consumption. And at idle, this pulls around 18 watts. Average gaming, 62. And the maximum I could get this to pull from the wall with the way it's set up right now was 71 watts. Remember, it comes with that 120 watt power supply and we could pull more, but I think we're right there at the thermal limit of the built-in cooler. So yeah, I mean, this is definitely a great performing little mini PC. We've got a pretty high-end CPU in here, being the 5900HX. It's still a mobile variant, but it's putting out some really good performance given that we only have an iGPU, and it's based on Vega, clocked at 2100 MHz. This will be a great little machine if you know what you're getting into. It's not a 1080p or 4K AAA gaming machine, but you can definitely get some gaming out of the way with the chip they have in this PC. And on their website, they claim that you can connect a GPU over the M.2 slot. If you're interested in checking a video like that out, let me know in the comments below. 
I think it would be really interesting to pair up a desktop RTX 3060 with this thing. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in learning more about the S500 Plus, I will leave a couple links in the description. And if you want to see more mini PC videos like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn notifications on so you know when I post the next one. And if there's anything else you want to see running on the S500 Plus, let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.